Before we talk about the science, let's discuss how we want you to listen and how you're going to use your Cornell notes. First thing, fill in your biology objective. Here it comes. I understand how the structure of water relates to its function in living things. While you're listening, look for essential questions. When you find them, write them down on the left-hand side of your Cornell note sheet. To get started, here's essential question number one. What is the structure of an atom? Once you've written down your essential question, listen and watch carefully to see if you can find the answers. Once you have the answers, write them down on the right-hand side. Let's talk about some science. Remember in this section, you're looking for the answer to essential question number one. What is the structure of an atom? Atoms are the smallest unit of matter that cannot be broken down by chemical means. The crazy thing about atoms is that they're found everywhere and they're found in everything. So if you know a little bit about the structural makeup of an atom, essentially you know everything that you need to know about the entire universe. And that's just crazy. Now we're going to start talking about the answer to your first essential question. The picture in front of you is a picture of an atom. Atoms are pretty simple. They only have three parts. And those three parts can only be found in one of two places. So from here on out, we're going to think of atoms as having an inside and an outside. The inside of the atom is called the nucleus, and it only contains two things. The yellow circle that you see with a positive sign is a proton, and the orange circle that doesn't have any charge associated with it is a neutron. These two things collectively make up the inside or the nucleus of the atom. But the real rock stars of the atom are the electrons. They're negatively charged and they're only found on the outside. In this movie, you can see that the electrons are never found in just one spot. They're constantly moving around the nucleus. If you haven't already filled in the answers for essential question number one, now's your last shot before we move on to essential question number two. <laughs> essential question number two, how is a molecule made? Here's a crazy question. How do we take something like this atom of nitrogen and turn it into this molecule of ammonia. Or what about this? How do I take an oxygen and add two hydrogens to it to form a water molecule? Don't be sad, oxygen. Maybe hydrogen can be your friend. See? Nothing bad will happen. That is... Unless a second one jumps in. Chemical bonding, which is the force that holds two or more atoms together, is responsible for the formation of these complex molecules. Remember earlier I told you that the electrons were the rock stars of the atom? Well, here's why. Those electrons, yeah, those guys are basically glue. They can hold two or more atoms together and form a molecule. But it gets even crazier than that. Electrons can be used as glue in two different ways. That means that there are two types of chemical bonds. Covalent bonds are the first type of chemical bond that we're going to discuss. They're formed by sharing electrons. Remember, sharing means caring. Here's an example of two atoms sharing electrons to form a molecule. May I try? Okay, you can try him, I guess. But be careful. He's my favorite toy. Thank you for sharing with me. Now you wait right here. I'll be right back. 
This is my robot. He's awesome. Would you like to give him a try? I sure would. I'm so lonely. Whee! I thought you sharing is fun. If covalent bonds are all about sharing, ionic bonds, the second type of bond that you're responsible for knowing, is all about bringing oppositely charged atoms together. And oppositely charged atoms, those guys, they're called ions. That means that ionic bonding works just like true love. Opposites attract. How else do you explain Beyonce and Jay-Z? Baby, I love you. All right, here is a visual recap of what we just discussed. Ionic bonding, opposites attract, covalent bonding, you're sharing electrons. <laughs> Essential question number three, what does a water molecule look like? The chemical formula of water is H2O. That means every water molecule is made up of two hydrogens attached to one oxygen. Here's our oxygen in red. Our oxygen is looking for two hydrogens to bond with so that it can form a water molecule. The two white structures that you see on the screen are our hydrogens. Our hydrogen atoms want to bond to oxygen because they actually don't have enough electrons to be stable. So when they bind to oxygen, they're able to share the electrons in the outer orbital or energy cloud of the oxygen atom to become stable. Here's a simpler version of the water molecule, fully labeled so that you can write it correctly on your Cornell notes. <laughs> Essential question number four. How do atoms bond together in a water molecule? To answer this question, we need to look back at the structure of water. Water is made up of two hydrogens attached to an oxygen. The bond holding each one of the hydrogens to the oxygen is covalent. So that means hydrogen and oxygen are sharing electrons. But here's the weird thing, and this is why water has so many awesome properties. They're not sharing the electrons equally. It's as if oxygen and hydrogen are playing a tug of war with the electron. Like the orangutan, our oxygen is stronger than the hydrogen. Because the oxygen is stronger than the hydrogens, it's able to pull the electrons closer to it. Because the electrons sit closer to the oxygen, the oxygen is going to take on the electron's charge. This means that water has both a positive and a negative side. It has opposite poles, just like our planet. What does all of this mean? It means that water has polarity. The electrons are not shared equally between the oxygen and the hydrogens. Water's polarity allows it to stick to itself. The bonds that form in between individual water molecules are called hydrogen bonds. Essential question number five. What are the unique properties of water? The first property is cohesion. Cohesion is water's ability to stick to other water molecules. Here's an example. The five water molecules that you see in this picture 
are attracted to one another and forming hydrogen bonds because of the opposite charges found on opposite ends of the individual water molecules. Now let's see cohesion in action. Some young Costa Rican basilisk lizards are looking for food. Basilisks have been nicknamed the Jesus Christ lizard. Why? This adult male, probably the father of the young lizards, can't tell us. Nor can this female, exclusive property of the territorial male. It has nothing to do with the feeding habits of the basilisk, which consists primarily of insects and berries. This predatory reptile will help reveal the secret as it stalks the young basilisk. The basilisk is called the Jesus Christ lizard because it can walk, well, maybe run on water. It bicycles its hind legs, and the tail becomes a counterweight. We can't know what the snake is thinking. Did it really want to eat the lizard, or did it just want to show? The second unique property of water is adhesion. Adhesion is water's ability to stick to other substances. Here's a great example. Water sticking to a spider's web. A third unique property of water is that it's a universal solvent. Water being a universal solvent simply means that it's really good at dissolving stuff. This is useful because water can then be used in our bodies to transport things into and out of cells. Essential question number six, what is pH? pH stands for the power of hydrogen, and we can use a pH scale to determine how much hydrogen is in a solution. Here's an example of a pH scale. A pH scale ranges from zero to 14. The lower a solution is on the pH scale, the more acidic it is. The higher the number, the more basic or alkaline the solution is. The only solution that's 7 on the pH scale is pure water. Pure water is neither acidic or basic, it's neutral. Here are some examples of solutions that are commonly found in households. See if you can determine whether they're acidic, basic, or neutral.